you're gonna be able to take any signed card clearly in the middle of the deck. You can show that it's right in the center. Then a spectator is gonna be able to shuffle those cards as much as they want. You don't need to touch those cards anymore. Then you just reach inside of your pocket and you pull out your phone, which happens to have a little wallet on the back. You can actually give this to your spectator. They will open it up, remove one of the cards, and they will find that underneath there, it is their exact same signed card. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Javier Fuenmayer. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm super excited. I have been using this nonstop this past week and I wanna share it with you guys. But before we do, I wanna give one extra thank you and that is to everyone who commented below two to three random objects that we could use in a later video to create a magic trick. I took down and I wrote down every single suggestion from you guys and I placed it inside of a chest box. If you guys want a chance to use your object, you can still comment down below and I will add your suggestions to this box so that in a later video we can start it out by just opening up that chest box, pulling out two to three objects and creating a trick on the spot with those three objects. Now getting back to the trick, I currently have the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but any phone at all is going to work. The only thing that's important is that you have a little phone wallet. This is the one that I just had with me, and it just so happens to have the MagSafe, so it does stick to the back of the phone via magnets. Now, I wanted to incorporate at the beginning this feature as a specific handling, but I think we're gonna leave that for later for another video, and instead, we're just gonna focus on how we can use this little phone wallet, or really any little wallet that you have, as your card to wallet. So if you wanna leave your wallet at home, and you just wanna go out with with your phone, you can still perform a really strong card to wallet or card to phone wallet, I should say, and it's gonna be with you at all times. Because of the method that we're gonna be using, it does not need to have the MagSafe feature. In fact, if you have it stuck against the back of your phone permanently, that's gonna work perfectly fine for you. You're gonna see that I discovered some cool features that this phone wallet has and it's gonna help us in the trick. But the only reason I, I discovered those things is because I sat down and I started playing with it. So I encourage you, if you have a phone wallet currently on your phone or if you just go to the dollar store or any, any cheap store really, you can get any and you should be able to discover features that it just already has and it's gonna help you um, accomplish certain things. In my case, I wasn't trying to do a card to wallet, I just happened to discover it. And so for those reasons, I'm sharing that with you guys today. So make sure that you play with whatever it is that you have, because you'll never know what it is you're going to discover. What this is gonna let you do is have an object appear, in this case, a signed playing card in between two credit cards. So if you're familiar with a card to wallet that uses a slider, you're gonna be set to go. This is gonna be incredibly easy for you to perform. If you haven't done that, I'm gonna walk you through some very simple ways in which you can accomplish it. You're also going to need a little extra something in order to make this work. But before we get there, let's get started with the phone wallet. One of the convincers that I really like about this phone wallet is that it has a little flap in which everything just seems extra secure and like there was no way that something could have been slipped inside. Again, this is just an extra feature that I found just because I already had this with me. If you have one that doesn't have that, it should still be just as impressive. In order to set it up, as you know with usually card to wallet, if you own mine, you know that all you have to do is just lift up that back credit card and you're ready to go. For this, it's gonna be pretty much the same. You're just gonna take two cards and place them inside. Notice that one of them goes underneath that flap that I have here. The other one, I'm gonna leave it sticking up and that's going to be holding that flap open and to the top. Now, you can take a closer look and you'll see that there's actually a gap in between both credit cards. This is going to facilitate sliding that card or anything else we want to appear in between those two credit cards. Notice how that card just slides in very, very easily. And here is where I have to tell you that extra little thing that you're going to need, and that is 
a bridge deck. That or if you find a credit card holder that can hold a poker size card, that's going to work. Now, I tend to have a bridge size deck, I also have a parlor size deck, and I technically use that bigger deck to practice lights. That way, when I go back to a regular poker size, it feels smaller and easier to palm and do all the different sleight of hands. Also, if you guys are interested in the ways that I like to practice, I have very weird ways in which I like to um, practice, let me know in the comments below and maybe I will start doing a little series on how to practice um, so you can speed up your sleight of hand learning abilities. As you can see, the bridge card fits perfectly inside of a credit card holder because they are just a little bit thinner than the poker size ones. If you're completely against using bridge cards, don't worry, stick till the end. I will show you many different ways in which you can use this gimmick for completely different effects also including regular cards. Once we have the phone wallet set up, we have both credit cards in, one is slightly sticking up and we can see the top flap up there. Now, if you don't have a flap, all you have to do is just have the credit card sticking up and you're going to be sliding that card in front of the credit card. If you have one that has the flap like this, so then you'll see that we can push the flap back and the card will just naturally slide in between both of those cards. Now that you know how that card is going to be inserted into your gimmick, well, it's not really a gimmick, this is regular, but you know what I mean. Um, you just place the phone in whichever pocket you're going to be loading it. Because I'm used to doing the card to wallet, I usually load in my back right pants pocket. So I'm going to put the phone with the wallet facing out in my back pocket. That way, when my hand comes back with the card palmed, all I have to do is just feel the top of the phone wallet, the little flap that's open, push against the phone, and immediately I'm going to be able to push the card in. I can then come back forward and gesture for a second. And when I need to get the, the phone out, all I do is pull the flap down with my fingers. You're going to feel almost like a little click if you have this one. If not, it's just going to go all the way down. And as I pull it out of my pocket, I'm going to use my fingers to pull the flap slightly up and then back down into the phone pocket. And then it's pretty much just closed and it looks exactly as it should. Then, whenever you're ready to reveal, all you have to do, you can even have a spectator do this for you, or you can do it yourself, but you just remove the little flap, you open up the credit card, remove the one credit card from the top, and then you're gonna be able to take that card out. If you have a spectator do this, this is gonna be even stronger because as you'll notice, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get that card out, but that just enhances the effect, which is a good thing. I choose to cop the card out rather than palming it because I feel like it's a little bit easier for me to put it into the gimmick. On top of that, I have also the choice of whether I want to have the card face up or face down a little bit easier than if I had palmed the card. That way, I get to choose whether I want that card to be revealed face up or face down. My favorite way to perform this is finishing off any card routine that I'm doing, let's say like an ambitious card routine, I just like to finish it inside of my phone. Another way in which you could do this is you have a card selected, signed, the moment you get that card back, you immediately palm the card as you hand the deck for them to be shuffled. For a split second, come behind your back with the card and you just leave it or deposit it onto the gimmick. Now you're not pushing it in, you're just leaving it there for a split second. That way you can show your hands empty, not like, hey, check my hands, look, I have nothing in my hands, but you're just saying, go ahead, shuffle the cards as much as you want, and you're just showing that you have nothing. That way, when you go back to get your phone, that's when you do all of the moves. That's when you actually push the card in, you pull the flap down, and as you pull your phone out, you slide that flap into the gimmick so that it's completely copacetic. You then do a little switch, which is you take the deck and you give them your phone. And at this point, 
you already know what to do. The trick is pretty much done. So what if you don't wanna use a bridge side stack? I know I like poker size as well. So in those instances, you can just very easily do a mercury card fold. Thank you so much, Lloyd, for giving me that idea. But you could just simply do a mercury card fold and put it inside or load it inside in between those two credit cards and you are set. Another thing you could do is forget about playing cards, just have a bill, make it vanish via a thumb tip or any other way in which you know how to make a bill vanish, and then you just load that into your gimmick. It could even be signed if you want. If you're into mentalism, so then very easily you could have your prediction appear in your phone. If you have a notepad where you're pretending to write notes, well, you could have a business card there and you just fill in your prediction, palm it out as you get your phone so somebody can hold it, and now you have a prediction inside of your phone wallet that somebody was holding the entire time. I have been having a ton of fun playing with this little thing. This is literally all the pocket space it takes and you can use it for multiple, multiple things. So I encourage you to play with the one you have and figure out different ways in which you can utilize its components to fit whatever it is you're trying to do. Maybe the one you have is gonna let you do things that this one just can't do. Again, I wanna give a huge thanks to everybody who sent in their suggestions of random objects that we can use in a later video. If you want your objects to be added to the chest box, feel free to comment down below. I'm gonna add those in there as well. And then in a later video, we're gonna take those objects and create a magic trick around those objects. Oh, and one more thing, feel free to check out my other videos right here. I'm gonna post a new video every single Monday. I wanna thank you so much for your time. Once again, I'm Javier Fuenmayer, and I will see you next time. And gesture so that they see that your hands are...